Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. How are you doing today? We are back with the legendary investor, Mr. Greg Dickerson. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, Michael. How are you doing? Good to I'm, be back, huh? Yes, absolutely. So I, so the audience may not realize that we actually took about six days off because you were gracious enough two weeks ago to record four videos with me. So we did two that day, and then I snuck two in last week. So they they saw us together, even though we haven't spoken in two weeks. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. I do it all for them, not you. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amen. It's it's all about the audience. So hey, we're we're here uh, July nineteenth. The the mark the stock market's been open for about I don't know thirty minutes or no, I guess it's been an hour and a half now, ninety minutes. And last time I checked, it was down nearly eight hundred points. So I thought it'd be a good conversation for you and I to have to, to just pontificate. Hey, stock market's crashing. Uh, you know, it's down 10, 20, 30 percent. What changes in our investment horizon? Um, because yeah, so you are, are West Coast, correct? So I'm East Coast. So the market, you know, has been open for you know a couple hours now for okay. me on the East Coast. But um, you know, yeah, we're down 781 points right now. And the interesting thing is, the markets are so high now that yeah. you know the point moves look significant, but from a percentage yeah. standpoint, they're really not. I mean, it's down two and a quarter percent. And you know, I really feel like we can reasonably expect and anticipate a 10%, 15% correction. I mean, totally agree. should be due. Totally so agree. being down, you know, a couple of percent is not a huge deal in, in the whole scheme of things, but it looks really ugly when you're looking at <laughs> points, yeah. you know, versus percentages. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. This, this video is, I just want to pontificate because again, what this, this may, I mean, according to JP or no Morgan Stanley, Morgan Stanley this morning came out the note saying, Hey, we're due for a correction, 10, 15, maybe 20%. What I want to do here is just say, okay, you know, pick a date in the near future, the stocks are now down 20%. What mm -hmm. changes in our world, right? We, we look at our market, we're making investment decisions all the time. I don't know if you're swayed by what's going on in the stock market. I'll sort of share my opinion too, but I'll start with yours. All right. So, you know, the, the stocks are down 20%, you know, someday in the next week to 10 days, 20 days. What changes in your world? For me, it's a hunt for value. I'm always on the hunt for value. I'm an opportunistic investor. So I'm not a long-term market investor in any market at any time. I'm a compound cash, you know, ROI over time in terms of the least amount of time, effort, and energy possible. So my business philosophy is and always has been, how do you make the most amount of money in the least amount of time with the least amount of energy and effort possible? So I look for- I don't um, like that. Yeah, I look for value in highly efficient markets because all markets are, are just highly efficient right now and they have become more efficient over the last 10 years. So when you see the stock market where it's at, number one, it's efficient. Number two, it's artificial. It's being propped up by the Fed and liquidity no that's been put out there. Real estate's the same way. Low interest rates has, has propped the market up combined with the pandemic um, where we've seen a lack of inventory, can't get houses built fast enough because there's no help. Mm -hmm. um, supply chain shortages, things like that. So for me, corrections can bring two things I'm looking for. One, mm -hmm. opportunities to enter somewhere mm -hmm. uh, in some area sector, depending on which market is correcting. Generally, if the stock markets are going to correct, you know, that can continue to boost real estate because what's the Fed going to do? They're going to shoot money out there and keep interest rates low, right? Um, so I keep an eye out for that just to see what the policy coming out of the Fed's going to be, see how far they're going to let it run. Mm. Now a correction, 10, 15% is no big deal. A crash, right. 20, 30, 40% is another situation, another yeah. issue. Yeah. Yeah. So 10, right 10, now I'm in, I'm in opportunity value hunt. If okay. we get a crash, 30, 40, 50%, I'm in protection mode. Okay. So let's play that out. So again, the what I'm hearing you say, and if I'm wrong, just correct me. Uh, so let's assume the markets are 20%. So right on the border between, you know, crash cor and correction, right? A correction and a crash. Yeah. Um, so would it be fair to say that you might opportunistically look for a particular stock or maybe an index or sector that's beaten up unfairly and go in for a short term play? You know, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm a swing guy and I did the same thing in the bottom, at, you know, 2009 when the, okay. when the stock market was, everybody thought it was going to zero. Yeah. And, you know, Dow was 6,000, S&P 600. That's when I jumped in. Nice. See, that's, that is one huge difference um, between us is, is, you know, the market, the, the stock market goes down 20%. I don't even bother looking. Right. Uh, I did get into like seven or eight stocks, one of them being Citigroup when it was under three bucks or under two bucks or something. Like if it really crashes, I'll come in. 
but I won't, I won't bother. Cause I, I've been burned the stock market historically. I, you know, again, I got a scar that I keep pointing at. So maybe it's a biasy that I just need to throw away, but yeah, the stock market goes down 20%, not, not spending an iota looking at a stock or a sector. Uh, so th that won't change, but yeah, if it crashes 40%, yeah, you'll, I, I'll put money to work, no question. So I think that's- Yeah, I'm a swing momentum investor. So I look for big swings and yep. I trade with the momentum. So if it's okay. down or up, that you know that's what I'm looking at. And you know it's gotta be big. I don't buy the dips. I don't buy the yeah. corrections. I look for big moves. Okay. So I've been out of the market for you know the last however many years. Now I've missed a lot of opportunity, but sure. uh, you know to me, it just never made any sense and it's marginal gain. But yeah. I, you know, I mean, over if I'd have stayed in over the last- five to seven years, I might've gained 10, 15%, maybe 20. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, so I haven't missed a ton, but I haven't been in the markets because they've just been, they just don't make any sense to me. Oh, I totally, I think the stock markets are greatly exaggerated. I think Morgan Stanley's right. I think you're right. I think we're in, we could easily see a 10 to 20% drop in the next 90 days. No question. The other thing that stuck out to me is that, did you see the 10 year note this morning? It's under yeah. one, two. Mm -hmm. That's dude, that's a signal. To me, that's a signal that the rest of the world is scared. That's mm -hmm. what it tells me. What about you? Yeah, yeah. It's it's very interesting where we're at. And that started last week while you were gone. The big, yeah. everybody's going, what's going on with the bond market? You know, yeah. the stocks, are, stocks are tailing off. Bonds should be going up. Gold should right. be going up. Yeah. You're, you're not seeing that. I think you're going to see a flight to cash. Exactly. Especially if this accelerates. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And we've talked about it. I think we've, we've, we've done two or three episodes, folks. If you don't know this, Greg Dickerson has a playlist on this channel, all his own. It's got hugely valuable stuff to go back and listen to. And again, he was one of the first people talking about, you know, cash is not trash. You know, he's raising cash so he can find opportunities just like J, uh, Jamie, Jamie Dimon at, at JP Morgan. So that, that's awesome. So but back to kind of what I do in my market, if there's a correction, right? 20% or less. Uh, what I look, for, obviously I'm in the residential space, not really commercial or other stuff. Uh, what, what I look for is, you know, 10 to 20% could start to impact people in bubble markets. I live in the Bay Area. It's a very expensive market, right? Our average median price is $1.2 million, which is stupid. Uh, we do have a lot of stock wealth. A lot of companies went public. A lot of people are paid with what's called RSUs. Uh, and if the stock market, especially tech, right? If tech fell 20%, that could stop or delay house buying decisions, right? It, it could be that impactful. However, I invest in Fresno, California, which is not a market that is influenced by stock market gains. It could have some impact at the margins with people moving and things of that nature. But generally speaking, a 20% or less crash in the stock market doesn't really impact Fresno. I've been investing in Fresno since before or just after the dot-com crash. So, you know, I, I've kind of seen that. So I do look for the impact on the consumer and where I will see a 20% correction be most impactful is in the bubble markets, not so much the tertiary markets. Does that make sense? Yeah, and you know, it's really interesting. So in the past, the way the stock market generally will affect real estate is most people will cash out of the stock market and buy real estate. Yeah, exactly. So the, yeah. that's how it affects it on the positive. I've never seen it affected on the negative because it, you know, they're two different things. So valuations of stocks, bonds, commodities, things like that are not generally related to or affected by real estate. Those are two separate asset classes, two separate differentiations. And, you know, of course there's real estate stocks, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, REITs you know, and all that, yeah. what you could see, yeah, is people will cash out, go into real estate because it's just, just a different asset class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And you'll see the vice versa. If somebody loses money in the stock market, well, they'll sell their real estate and go into the stocks, but that's mm -hmm. not broad scale. What's really interesting about this point in time is Silicon Valley. Let's say every company in Silicon Valley stock gets slammed cut in half. Doesn't sure. change the underlying business. No. Their stock is just overvalued because there's free money. People are looking for somewhere to put it. So you can cut, you know, Amazon stock right in half. You can cut it down 75%. Amazon is still a very profitable, successful company that's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Apple, same thing with Google, same thing with Facebook. Those are the people that are hiring and paying exorbitant salaries yeah. to people. Because the average salary is probably, you know, for executives there, three, four, five hundred thousand and up. You know, average employees are making, you know, pretty good money. So that's why the housing stock is being driven up in those areas. Mm -hmm. Stock values or stock prices of those companies aren't going to affect real estate only if there's something wrong with the companies. And you know, again, we're not seeing issues with earnings. We're not seeing issues mm -hmm. with, you know, the business models of, of the tech companies. We're seeing issues with valuations because 
it's just, there's just so much liquidity out there. It's got nowhere else to go. It's the risk trade. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And again, I saw it up close and close. That, that's the beauty of it doing this for 20 years and, 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 and focusing on one market is I've seen what happens when, you know, the stock market rolls over or tech gets hammered. You're right. A lot of people start, start to go, hmm, maybe I should do that real estate investing thing. I can get leverage. I can get 30 year debt, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's funny how when, the, when people have fear in the stock market, you know, they run to a different asset class and, and being a landlord or a real estate investor is often that other asset, like you said. And, you know, and on the cash thing, so a lot of people misinterpret or misunderstand when I talk about cash. You know, yep. I did a video the other day with Chris Vermeulen um, of the technical traders. He's out of Canada. We were talking about right now in this climate with the markets, where they are, you know, where do you want, let's say you have a hundred million bucks and you want to allocate, what's your yep. percentages? Okay. And, you know, for me and for him, a large percentage is cash. So people misunderstood that saying that I think you should be in cash or I think you should invest in cash over the long haul. Mm. And what I'm saying is, is that when it's very uh, uncertain times and when, you know, everybody is calling for a correction, you know, the markets are going to correct. You want to be mostly in cash so you can take advantage of major swings. And, you know, I'm not saying cash is a value play. I'm not saying it's a long-term store of wealth. I'm not saying that's where you should be. What I'm saying is when the world is uncertain, when economic Armageddon is coming, everybody goes to the dollar all mm. around the world. And it's the number one most held currency around the world. So yep. it's not my opinion. It's not <laughs> what I think. It's the facts. Yeah. Look at the charts. Agreed. When everything's down, dollars up. You mm -hmm. know, when everything's up, dollars down. Yeah. So it's not my opinion. It's not anything other than it's just a fact. And it, and it is what it is. And it's the way it's going to be, you know, long term. Like a lot of people think or propose that, you know, a cryptocurrency or Bitcoin can replace the dollar. It just isn't going to happen. No. It's always going to be the United States dollar because it's backed by the United States government. We're the largest economy in the world. China might surpass us in GDP. They will never surpass us as a world reserve currency because look at what China's doing. Yeah, it's no chance. Yeah. And I totally agree with you. We're seeing a great example right now, folks, of the fear, the dollar strengthening when, when people are scared. That's what's happening right now. That's why the 10 years under 1.2 and if it's down from 1.5 and a peak of 1.77 or whatever it was, it's because the rest of the world is scared. It's just- If everything goes to zero, all assets go to zero, the dollar will be the medium of exchange of value around the world. This no question. It's going to be. No question. So again, folks, what I think what you're hearing here, at least in my opinion, is if there is a stock market correction, 20% or less, not really much moves the needle. If there's a crash, uh, 40% or more that will get our attention. We will allocate dollars to stocks or categories or indexes. Whatever well, I go want. into protection mode first. Oh, okay? That's true. So the first thing I look at is how do I protect myself? Yep. I go to cash. Yep. Where's the safest place to keep cash? You know, So that's what you got to look at. What banks are at risk? What financial institutions are Good at risk? Point. So you need to make sure you understand where your cash is, depending on how much you have to protect. Yep. Um, or you put it in an instrument that um, is going to be protected during that. So that's first and foremost, how do yeah. you protect it? Because if you're going down that much, you don't know where it's going to stop. Yeah. You know? And night. then once you get down, you know, you can kind of start to pick the bottom like, oh, you know, I did back in 08, 09. It was pretty easy to kind of see a bottom there. Although I didn't know enough about the markets to not know if it could go to zero. I mean, yeah. I was like, what's going on? What's here? going you know? on? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd never really invested in markets before that. And I jumped in right at the bottom because, you know, I was young and I can take risk. Yeah. Now I'm a little different. Now I'm, I'm a little older and I'm protecting what I've built. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be in protection mode first. I'm going to make sure I understand, are we done? Yeah. And I'm in. There you go. Well, I appreciate this, folks. Pay attention to uh, episode number two, because I think Greg and I are about to disagree on something that is important. So Greg, do me a favor. How can people follow you? GregDickerson.com. Everything is there. YouTube channel, podcast. I put out content every day. So check it out. Yes, you do. It's great stuff. Thanks, buddy.